Hey there, good morning everybody. It is Sunday morning, 8 o'clock on April the 24th, 2022, and we're in the book of Leviticus, chapter number 19 today. Uh, this chapter is going to be a little bit entertaining for us. It's a miscellaneous list of sundry items, a hodgepodge, if you will, of things that God wants for his people to do, much of them given so that they can differentiate themselves from the pagan people of the land. And so let's pray and get right into it this morning. Father, help us as we read and study. Thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the principle of separation. I pray that even today, although we may not be held bound to each and every one of these things as they don't relate to today's culture, many of them still do in a number of ways. So would you give us wisdom and help us, please? We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, that's Leviticus 19.1, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. We're supposed to be a holy people, separate, different, like God. Verse 3, Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father. And keep my Sabbaths, I am the Lord your God. That's commandments 5 and 4. Uh, commandment 5, honor thy father and thy mother. Commandment 4, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. We're going to see a couple of the Ten Commandments listed here. And so we're to fear our parents, we're to honor them, we're to uh, hold them in high regard. Doesn't matter if your parents are doing right or not, doesn't matter uh, what you think of them, you're supposed to be respectful and honor them. And then we keep the Sabbaths of the Lord. Now, we're not bound to uh, the law here, as we see in the New Testament and Jesus, we find our rest in Christ. And anytime we find our rest in Christ, we're participating in a Sabbath of sorts. Uh, we're not held to the very day and the strictness of the law. But even so, a day of rest every week is a wise principle. Verse number four, turn ye not unto idols, nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So that's the second commandment. No graven images. So we're not to worship idols. We're not to worship statues. We're not to pray to statues. We're not to pray to pictures or symbols. I know folks that have crosses and crucifix and they pray before those symbols. That's not your God. Your God is exists in a temple uh, built without hands. In fact, we are the temple of God. Pictures of Jesus. People pray to them. That's idolatry. That's not Jesus. I hate to break it to you. It's not him. Uh, he doesn't want graven images. I, it really, I'm really surprised at the number of Bible-believing Christians who still participate in, in this area of, of art depicting the Lord Jesus Christ when he said, thou shalt have no graven images. Oh, anyways, ah, verse number five, and if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, ye shall offer it at your own will. So the peace offering is just a free will offering that people could bring. It wasn't a, a sin offering. It wasn't a burnt sacrifice. It was a peace offering. And God doesn't want our fellowship with him to be forced. He wants us to willingly and joyfully come to him. Then he says in verse six, it shall be eaten the same day ye offer it. And on the morrow, and if it ought remain unto the third day, it shall be burnt in the fire. And if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable, and it shall not be accepted. Therefore, every one that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he hath profaned the hallowed thing of the Lord, and that his soul shall be cut off from among his people. So this peace offering had to be eaten within the first two days. If you let it go to the third day and you still eat it, then you've eaten a profaned offering. And the teaching here is the principle of, of freshness versus stale. They're talking about fellowship with God. He wants our fellowship with him to be of our own free will. And then he wants it to be kept fresh. You ought to, to walk with God daily. Don't, don't let more than two days go without walking with God and spending time with him. Daily is best. If you let your walk with God get stale, then you're going to find yourself without him. 
Verse number nine. And when ye reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not wholly reap the corners of thy field, neither shalt thou gather the gleanings of thy harvest. And thou shalt not glean thy vineyard, neither shalt thou gather every grape of thy vineyard. Thou shalt leave them for the poor and stranger. I am the Lord your God. So when it came to harvesting crops, God said, you you have a rectangular field, and as you're plowing, you're going to make a turn, and you're not going to hit every inch of that corner, are you? You're going to leave the corners as you sweep uh, around them. I don't know if this will (laughs) cover it or not, but this area here that doesn't get harvested you're going to leave that for the poor this is a this is a social program to help the poor they can come to your field and glean from those areas also you don't take every single solitary grape off the vines you leave some behind for the poor verse number 11 ye shall not steal neither deal falsely neither lie one to another i forget which commandment thou shalt not steal is but here it is again you don't steal from people you don't deal falsely with people so you know sell them something that's not what you claim it to be uh or so forth so forth uh neither lie to one another that's bearing false witness another one of the ten commandments You're not to defraud each other is what this is all about. Uh, This also gives us the concept of private property ownership. There are some people that say, oh, the book of Acts, that's how we're supposed to do this. Everything's available to everybody. They did that for a time to help those thousands of new converts and strangers to the land of Jerusalem to get them going. But there were people among them that took advantage of that. And that's why Paul had to start teaching, you know, you have to go to work. If a man doesn't work, neither should he eat and that type of thing. So we're also not to steal from one another, defraud one another. Verse 12, and ye shall not swear by my name falsely, Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. So don't take the name of the Lord in vain. You're not to, you know, some people use this phrase, I swear to God. And uh, sometimes they say it and they're lying. And that's what he's saying here. Uh, Jesus said, let your conversation be yea, yea, nay, nay. You shouldn't have to swear over anything. Verse 13, thou shalt not defraud thy neighbor, neither rob him. The wages of him that is hired shall not abide with thee all night until the morning. So we're supposed to not uh, rob from our neighbor. We're not to defraud them out of anything. And then if you hire someone to work for you, you're supposed to pay them at the end of the day. You don't make them wait until the next day even. Now, we can come up with different agreements if we choose to, but here, prompt payment is what we're being told. Verse number 14. Here's the cruelty of people. Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear thy God, I am the Lord. And so deaf people can't hear your cursing, but other people can. You don't curse the deaf, nor do you trip the blind. A stumbling block was something that would be in the pathway of someone walking that they would trip over. And so you don't trip blind people. This is how cruel people can be sometimes that God has to actually tell them, hey, don't do these things. There's also an understanding that we're to care for those with physical disabilities and handicaps as well and not uh, and try to accommodate them rather than hinder them. Verse 15, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So this is talking about those who are in the position of judgment, uh, judges of the land. They're to to be blind. They're to have that blindfold on. You don't feel for someone just because they're poor and let them off. You don't uh, honor someone just because they're rich and you give them what they need or let them off. You deal with justice. Justice says, here's the law. Here's the penalty if broken. Or here's the, the effort we're asking for and here's the reward that we're promising. You give according to what has been done. Verse 16, thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people. This is a gossip. God doesn't want his people gossiping about each other and talking about each other. Neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the Lord. 
Honestly, I'm not sure what that's all about. Verse 17, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. So two principles here, don't hate your neighbor. Be good to people, love the, your neighbor, love your enemies, don't hate them. And then there are times when we have to rebuke people that are in our lives. Maybe they're hurting themselves, maybe they're hurting others, and you have to say, hey, wait a minute, no, don't do that. You don't allow sin to abide in people's lives. Verse 18, thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, I am the Lord. So we're not to harbor bitterness in our hearts against others. Ye shall keep my statutes. Thou shalt not let thy cattle gender with a diverse kind. Thou shalt not sow thy field with mingled seed. Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. So there's three different things here that are mentioned. You don't allow cross-breeding of different types of cattle. You don't sow two different seeds at the same time in the same field. And you don't mix fabrics in a garment. Now, those seem like really strange commands, don't they? What does it matter if you breed a horse and a donkey and get a mule? Uh, what does it matter if you decide to sow corn and soybeans in the same field? What does it matter if you wear 50% uh, cotton, 50% wool shirts? Well, today, none of those things matter. But in the times of, of God's people, the Israelites, all three of those things were pagan practices to appeal to false gods. Like today, we might say, you know, don't uh, cut your yard into the symbol of a pentagram, you know, something like that. Uh, we're not to associate ourselves with our appearance or our behavior uh, with the pagan people. And so because of now, none of these three things matter to us at all right now that it's gone. There's no one who, who thinks wearing a mixed fabric shirt makes you an idolater of a false God, but it did at this time. And that, what that teaches us is sometimes things can change. Like the, the, the hippie movement and the beatnik movement of the sixties was so strong that I know uh, Christians, uh, by and large, avoided men avoided wearing beards because the beards were uh, associative with those people and those movements. And so we have no part of that whatsoever back then. Well, now that's not a thing anymore. And so Christian men are wearing beards just like men have always worn beards. But for a time period, they chose not to. It wasn't sinful, but it was associative with those types of people. And so they said, I'm not going to do that. And there are many, many things that are that way. If you see something prevalent among the lost world, you should pull away from that. And I'm not talking about breathing air and eating food. I'm talking about personal behaviors, uh, or even personal appearance matters. And we'll get to that in a few minutes too. All right, now here's a strange couple of verses. And whosoever lieth carnally with a woman that is a bondmaid betrothed to an husband and not at all redeemed nor freedom given her, she shall be scourged. They shall not be put to death because she was not free. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord under the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, even a ram for a trespass offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering before the Lord for his sin which he hath done, and the sin which he hath done shall be forgiven him. So if you've got a maid who is uh, engaged, she, first off, she's a slave. She's owned property. And she is engaged to be married to a free man. But she ends up committing adultery with another man. Well, then they're going to both be scourged, but they won't be killed. And he then has to bring a sin offering to the door. So this is really more about adultery again here. And then he's going to take this woman on to be his wife uh, after the fact. Verse number 23 
And when you shall come into the land, so this is coming into the land of promise. They're not here yet, but when they do, and shall have planted all manner of trees for food, then you shall count the fruit thereof as uncircumcised. Three years shall it be uncircumcised unto you, it shall not be eaten thereof. But in the fourth year, all the fruit thereof shall be holy to praise the Lord withal. And in the fifth year, you shall eat of the fruit thereof, that it may yield unto you the increase thereof. I am the Lord your God. And so <clears throat> we're learning about the planting of trees. When you move into the land, you're going to plant a bunch of trees. The first three years, don't even eat the fruit of them. Leave it alone. It's uncircumcised or, or not for you. Then the fourth year, the fruit harvest is the Lord's. Bring that to the temple of God. Then the fifth year, you can start eating of it. Now, the first three years is for the benefit of the soil, the benefit of the trees themselves and their fruit-bearing potential. Uh, but after that, God takes the, the first fruits, and then they may eat thereafter. Verse 26, we talked about this. You shall not eat anything with the blood. Neither shall ye use enchantment nor observe times. So we're talking about witchcraft here, enchantment. Uh, you're not going to have seances. You're not going to have read crystal balls, observing of times. That would be, um, what do you call it, the horoscopes and so forth. Then here's another one, speaking of beards, and this is regarding appearances. Ye shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard, Ye shall not make any, okay, let's stop there. Ah, no, let's keep going. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. So we've got appearance issues here. Don't trim the corners of your heads. Don't mar the corners of your beard. This, These, again, were pagan practices. They wore their hair a certain way. They wore their beards a certain way. They would cut their flesh for the dead. They would tattoo their body, usually in reference to something that they worshipped. And so God says, I don't want you doing any of that. Don't, don't cut your hair like the, the heathen do. Don't cut your flesh like the heathen do. And don't tattoo your body like the heathen do. Even that there today is, is highly uh, known to be a practice done by lost people who have no regard for God. And so Christians ought to avoid behaviors like that. You know, I wear my hair uh, not like the world. I wear it like a conservative Christian would wear it. My wife does the same thing. We dress that way. Uh, we don't make any cuttings on our flesh. Uh, we don't get tattoos on our body. We don't do those things because we don't want to be like the rest of the world. For that matter, we don't color our hair bright blue or bright green or bright pink or bright orange. Uh, there are people in the world that do that many times, not in every case. There are some people that are just free spirits that are trying to do that kind of thing. But the, the crowd that those types of, of appearances and looks that they're representing, they're not a godly crowd. In fact, some of them are among the most wicked of all crowds. Piercings. Is it wrong for a woman to pierce her ears? No. How about put a hook through the middle of her nose? What What does that say? Uh, well, first off, I was in Texas last week, and every bull that I saw had a ring through its nose and a rope attached to it. So I don't know what that says, but maybe consider it. Uh, you, you know, there are things that the lost world does in terms of their appearance, and Christians should not follow the practices of of the lost world concerning our appearance. I know you didn't like that, and, and many people don't, but take it up with God. Amen? Verse 29, Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom, and the land become full of wickedness. Now we read that and we go, what? Who in their right mind would do that? People were doing it. Why? Again, because of the pagan people of the land. The lost people of the land would would have a fertility god, and so they would prostitute their daughter in order to please the fertility god. It's mind-boggling. That's what they were doing. And here, God has to tell his people, don't do that. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. 
Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So more witchcraft. Don't uh, don't be getting your fortune told. Don't be going to a seance. Don't be asking someone to read your palm. Uh, what does your horoscope mean? All of that's witchcraft and idolatry, and you don't want any part of it. Then, here's some uh, more here. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. And the honor the face of the old man and fear thy God, I am the Lord. So the hoary head is the white hair. Uh, you know, I guess I'm just a young man still. I see lots and lots of dark hair and I don't see any white hair. And if you do, uh, I don't believe you. Uh, so honor the older folks, men and women. Fear thy God, I am the Lord. Verse 33, and if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, ye shall not vex him. So if someone who's a non-Israelite comes into the land to dwell with them, and we're talking individuals here now, we're not talking about entire groups of people, entire nations of people, but just a stranger strangles in, a st strangles in, uh, straggles in. That's what I was trying to say, I think. Uh, you don't cause that guy problem. Hey, you're not from around here, are you? That's not how you act. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. He's saying, you know, have have compassion on those who aren't like you, and they, they end up in your land. Love them as yourselves. Verse 35, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, in meat yard, in weight, or in measure. So if you're selling things and you're using scales to do it, don't cheat people with false weights. Just balances, just weights, a just ephah and a just hin shall ye have. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall ye observe all my statutes and all my judgments and do them. I am the Lord. Sorry about that. Uh, I am the Lord. So there you have it. That's what God uh, has told his people to do in 37 verses. A lot of stuff there. Very interesting. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching. Come see us at Lighthouse this morning, 9.30 a.m. Uh, for Sunday School, 5458 Fenton Road, Flint, Michigan, just north of Hill Road. We'd be honored to have you. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know we're out here, and we'll see you tomorrow again live. God bless you. Have a great day.